How much antimatter would you need to power a warp engine? The answer is the equivalent of 100 quadrillion billion hydrogen bombs. Let's discuss this. My main episode this week is Warp According to Enterprise, which uses a deuterium anti-deuterium reaction to power the warp core. The most famous real-world example of a warp drive is the speculative Alcubierre drive, which was discussed in a famous paper written in 1994. Now, the Alcubierre drive is consistent with the equations of general relativity because relativity prevents objects from moving faster than light within space-time, but it doesn't prevent space-time itself from contracting or expanding at superluminal speeds. Think about the expansion of the universe. Alcubierre proposed a way to create a warp bubble that moves the spacecraft faster than the speed of light relative to distant observers, even though locally within the bubble the spacecraft itself is not moving faster than light. Now, a significant challenge with the Alcubierre drive is that it requires exotic matter or a negative energy density to create and maintain this warp bubble. Us warp nerds always bring up negative energy density. What do we actually mean? Well, let's think about a black hole. This is an object that has such a high energy density that it warps spacetime down to a singular point where we no longer have physics to describe what's happening. Now, it has a positive energy density. If you wanted to escape this region of space, you would need to find some way to counteract the inward curve created by this positive energy density by applying a negative energy density to create an outward curve. So to create the curvature that you need for a warp bubble, you need positive and negative energy densities so that you're not just like trapped in some sort of a gravity well. Initial estimates for the energy required to power an Alcubierre drive are on the order of the mass energy of Jupiter. So how much energy is this? Well, Jupiter is 1.898 by 10 to the 17 kilograms. And using Einstein's E equals MC squared equation, we can work out the energy value would be around 1.7 by 10 to the 44 joules. How can we even begin to understand a number like this? 10 to the 44, it is enormous. But let's try to get a visual in some way using antimatter. Now, if each time you create a warp bubble, you need the mass energy of Jupiter, how much antimatter does that work out to be? Well, we know that one gram of antimatter is enough to produce the energy equivalent of the SAR bomb, the world's most powerful hydrogen bomb ever detonated. Its yield is about 2.1 by 10 to the 17 joules. That's a lot of energy. But like I said, we need 10 to the 44 joules. So how many SAR bombs do we need? Well, 8 by 10 to the 26 bombs. Remember, 1 billion is 10 to the 9. So, because one Sarbama is one gram of antimatter, we'd need around 100 quadrillion billion grams of antimatter. Let's put this into context. That is the same mass as 11 moons, or the whole planet of Mars. Using antimatter to power one singular warp bubble? It's not an engineering problem. It's pure science fiction.